Welcome. In a previous video, I took a look at this Espressif ESP32C3 microcontroller development board, and I'll put a link in the description to my ESP32 playlist where you can find that video. In this video, I'm just going to take a quick look at this ESP32 S2 board. So if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description of this board on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So here's the board. It's funny, you can see the little shards of fiberglass. I think that's what that is on the circuit board where they broke it. So here's the bottom side. There's not much here. I'm going to mount that on a board here. Well, it's pretty long, so it's actually kind of difficult to press that down. Another thing I noticed is that it's wider here. So actually this isn't really going to work because you can't access any pins on the outside of that. So you have a row of where you can put pins in here, but there's nothing here. So I think the way to solve this will be to take two of these boards and connect them together, like so, and I'll put this between the two boards. That way I have pins on both sides to access that. So here's a close-up of this board, and it has some similar things to the C3. It has the onboard RGB LED, it has the two buttons here. One difference is that this has the built-in antenna for the Wi-Fi, but it also has a connector so you can hook up an external antenna. And another thing, this has a lot more GPIO pins compared to the C3. It's hard to get both of these on here in macro mode, but the other chips look similar on here. Like this here, these chips, and here look similar. And they both have micro USB, obviously. I guess I can put them on like this. So I'll put a link below to a table that shows differences between these two, but I'll go over a couple of them. So the C3 is on the left, the S2 is on the right. The C3 was released in 2020, and the S2 was released in 2019. The C3 has a RISC V or RISC V, I don't know exactly how they pronounce that, processor, and that's at 160 megahertz. And this has a Tensilica Extensa LX7 240 megahertz processor. They're both 32 bit. The C3 has 400 kilobytes of RAM, and the S2 has 320 kilobytes of RAM. They both have Wi Fi 5, and it's BGN. The C3 has Bluetooth 5.0, and the S2, as far as I know, does not have Bluetooth at all. The C3 has 22 GPIO connectors and the S2 has 43 GPIO connectors. They both have a temperature sensor and the chart I'm looking at says this has 14 touch sensors and I think this one also has 14 touch sensors or at least I know it has some touch sensors. I think the S2 can be interfaced with an LCD and a camera and the C3 cannot but I'm not completely sure on that. These both have similar security as far as encryption and things like that. So between these two I like the form factor of this C3. I don't plan on hooking a lot of stuff into it. I'm just doing it for learning and experimenting, so I might have a sensor or two hooked into it. And it is smaller, and it fits on the breadboard a little easier than the S2. One reason I ordered the S2 is I've been wanting to play around with the Arduino software, and it doesn't appear to support the C3, although I could be wrong, but I had trouble finding information on that. But it appears the S2 does support that, so hopefully I'll be able to get that set up. Now, they both have Wi-Fi, and I do want the Wi-Fi capabilities. For instance, I'd like to have a temperature sensor hooked up to these and then be able to read it on a web page. So I should be able to do that with either of these. As far as Bluetooth is concerned, that's not as big of a deal, but I do like that this has Bluetooth in case I want to play with it someday. So I just wanted to do a quick look at the S2 board and just do a quick comparison of the two. In the future, if I find other differences that would sway a person to one or the other, I'll probably share that in the comments or I'll make a new video or something. But these are pretty cheap and it didn't cost me much to get a second one and I can always figure out different projects for them. I mean, they're kind of like Raspberry Pi computers, whereas I mean, you can have 20 of them and you can find 20 different uses for them. So I would really like to figure out how to monitor temperatures with these. And I think this could do the same thing as well as a Raspberry Pi or maybe even better. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.